That's a good topic. Let, let this, you know how cool this is? Like, I hear him, I do not see him. I don't see him. Yeah, I can't see him either. He's behind the haze. There's so this giant What's the next, smoke what's cloud the next one we're doing? Brandy. I think the brand is the promise, right? And it gets represented in everything we do. But employees have to buy in to your branding promise, your brand strategies. If the brand experience, the client experience is that amazing, the money will come. So, um, topic I, I, you know, comes to my mind quite a bit, um, branding especially in this day and age, right? I mean, you know, what is branding, what it's about, you know, but what is your brand? What do you, what, you know, what do you stand for? And what goes into a brand? And, you know, and, and again, we're not just talking logo, right? Because my, my topic this week actually on, is marketing, and I'm gonna be talking about brand, you know, a little bit as well uh, as part of that conversation. But um, in my travels, I, I hear that quite a bit. And everybody's, you know, they're, they're all looking for the logo, and they think that's their brand, is the logo. Right. But, but, but why don't we talk, talk a little bit about branding, number one, what does branding mean to you? Logo, yes, is a piece of it, identity, if you will, right? Brand promise, and you know, we talk about that quite a bit. Yeah. So let, let, let's talk about brand. I think the brand is the promise, right? And it gets represented in everything we do, everything we say, our vehicles, our dress. Uh, just when we were talking here uh, a few moments ago, I was in, in my shop yesterday, and the guys all look good, they were all in uniforms, but I noticed that their shirts are wrinkled. And I'm like, what's, what's going on with the shirts? I says, well, uh, I didn't have time to iron it. I'm like, wait a second, why aren't we pressing and laundering your uniforms? And so, oh, we, we didn't know we could do that. And so I said, I, effective immediately, I want your uniforms laundered and pressed by the uniform company. I don't care if it costs a couple of bucks more a uniform. Sure. Those little things, that to me is the brand, the brand promise. You know, when I think about it, my, we have a lot of service work done in our house. And I travel a lot just like you guys do. And more often than not, my wife is home alone when service people come to the house. And it's amazing the, the breadth of experiences she's had with really scary people yeah. and people that make her very uh, comfortable. But what makes her feel comfortable is, is a wrapped truck, is an ID badge, a pressed uniform, respectful, you know, clean cut. I'm not saying it's got to be like, you know, super clean cut, but it's, it's got to be presentable. You're not saying clean shaven, but the beard's got to be tight. Yes. Uh, and, then, and then the brand promise, you know? W what is the promise that we make? I look at sales in the HVAC industry. We, we are the promise makers. And then everyone who comes behind us are the promise keepers. And either they keep those promises or they don't. And if they don't, we look like frauds. We look like, you know, we just look unprofessional. Uh, Gary was at my house just last week. Was that this week or last week? Uh, last week. Last week he was over at my house and we were uh, prepping for this by drinking whiskey. <laughs> we weren't actually doing a podcast. I don't we were remember. practicing. <laughs> we, we were practicing. We were practicing. And, uh, well, no, yeah, it was like, the night you came, just the night you came over, Christy, your beautiful wife uh, came over with you. And we were, we were just talking about the brand experience. And one of the suggestions that Gary had for my company is that I needed to appoint one person in my company who was solely responsible for the brand experience. And that means when a job is sold, shaking the customer's hand, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Uh, after the job is installed, I'm here. Here's a gift basket. Here's the follow-up stuff, you know, referrals, all that kind of stuff, to really, really manage that whole brand experience. And I feel like in our industry, there is a huge tendency. We sell the job, we install it, and if there's a problem, they'll call us. And that was such a great suggestion. And in my company yesterday, I went in and did exactly that. Like, okay, this person who's my general manager and part owner of the company, I said, you are in charge of the brand experience. I want to make sure that people have just wonderful feelings about our company before, during, and after the installation. So to me, that's what brand is. And yes, it's the things you talk about, the shirts, the wraps, the vehicles, all that type of thing. But it's that whole experience. I know you're huge on that too. That's the whole success of your company. Yeah, um, I think there's three uh, parts of that. I, we, we call it the three-legged stool. So if you have two legs, obviously it's not balanced. 
So the first one is external media branding. You know, that's the look, the logo, the press shirts, uh, the image, the brand attributes, what I promise to the consumer, hey, this is what we're going to be like. Uh, and that, you know, is pretty easy to do, right? We, we're all pretty good at that. That's, the, that's that magic pill or the silver bullet that a lot of people think about is what's going to take your company over the top. But what but happens a, is... The pieces with that, you can also, you can go out and hire outsourcing to help you with that. Sure, yeah. Right? That's, it, it, it's not about doing it internally, right? it, but, it, but we create that, right? right. And then so the, the second uh, issue then is um, the internal marketing and communication side, which is how does the client actually touch the client facing folks, the call center, how we answer the phone, um, how we treat them in terms of call booking, you know, the scheduling, you know, are we on time, you know, all, all the experiences that a client has and the communication patterns that you work with, with your technicians, just how they're talking to the client. Are they respectful? Are they courteous? Do they, you know, speak in layman's terms? Are they well-trained? And so they have to, they have to, employees have to buy in to your branding promise, your brand strategy. So there's a lot of training, a lot of communication, and there's a lot of chopping wood that goes into that. That's, that's really hard work. And then the third uh, part of that stool is the operational marketing. That's your business processes. You know, does, the act, do, does somebody actually answer the phone? Or you know, do, do we get a voicemail? Uh, are we saying 24-7, 365, and then you know, I get an answering service and I don't call them back? Uh, does my vehicle you know, show up? Do we, do we have the right parts on the vehicle? Um, you know, do we have the right tools to complete the job? Are we, you know, exposing the client to a website that actually functions? You know, if they right. send a form in, does somebody actually respond to the form? So there's these three areas of marketing, you know, the operational side, the internal marketing side, and then the external brand promise that's out there. And so the weakness in our trade is we don't align all three of those things a lot of times. And so there's a lot of details that goes into that. You know, it's it's all of that stuff. And so I, I think one of the challenges that most companies have is they don't price properly in order to be able to deliver exceptional customer service to be able to do those things. So I want to tell you a quick story. Uh, last night, uh, I was um, I might have been at a craps table. It's possible. And <laughs> we were we were hanging out and we were having a great time. And uh, the experience at the table, you know, craps is a community game, right? And most of the people are betting and it's a, everybody's unified because we're all kind of rooting for the same thing unless you're playing the don't pass line. But everybody at this table was, you know, you're rooting for that number to come up. Well, the number came up and the guy next to me who happened to be an attorney, nice guy, uh, he had maybe had a couple of cocktails. So um, they, they didn't pay him on his, uh, his hard number. He bet the hard four and it was a hard four was the number that came up. And so everybody, you know, got paid out, and he's like, "Hey, I didn't get paid on the hard four. And the the um, the, the crew said, um, "You didn't have a hard four. And so this is the beginning of a moment of truth. This is an opportunity for good client experience or bad client experience. It's it's happening right there. And so I'm just paying attention to it because this guy has bet the hard four every single hand for the last four hours. He has never not bet the hard four, which is what he said. He's like, "Listen." I don't really care if you pay me or not. He's like, I bet the hard four, you, 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 I need to be paid. If you don't want to pay me, that's fine. So anyway, the pit boss uh, at the Aria, he's like, well, I'll tell you what. He goes, I don't like it, but I'm going to go ahead and pay you. Hmm. And so he had this look, scowl on his face. And I just looked at the guy and I went, how do you feel about that? And he goes, well, not that good. So, <laughs> hey, I mean, if you, you, just for the record, <laughs> the GMAM is not opposed to calling people out oh, yeah. in the service world. Yes. Right. <laughs> that's that's one example. I didn't but say I've a word. seen you do it many, many times. Yeah, I didn't say a word to him, but I mean this Dave. just Oh, just, how do you feel about it? No, that I was, was a word. I was talking I was talking to the the, the player. The, the, the player. Oh, yeah, okay. he was standing next to me and we'd been chatting. I the thought whole you time. were calling pit boss. No, 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 no. The pit boss was just you know, he was gnarly and he was just not happy and it it wasn't that much money. So I, I literally I looked at the guy and I go the Dubai fund owns a lot of this. There was $32 billion and they put in the last $20 billion. So they own the capital development here. They own a lot of that Aria casino. And so I just kind of chuckle with them. I go, you know, they just paid you $225 for your $25 hard four. And so I said, I don't really think the Dubai fund is going to miss the 225. I go, but are you coming back? And he's like, yeah, I'm not too sure about it. So it was a classic example of, yeah. you know, uh, it was a moment of truth. The pit boss could have just absolutely said, 
no problem. It's not a big deal. I mean, they're, they're, th- these are billion dollar casinos. Yeah. It's tripping not a big deal. over dollars to save pennies. Yeah. So the brand took a hit. And so I was there. Obviously, I'm telling this story now. So other people are hearing that story. And this sure. is how it happens. The so that is communication. And that's training. And that's just the guy who was running that particular table that night. He just didn't understand good client experience. He was going to pay the guy the 225 anyway. He'd already made up his mind he was going to pay it. But Why not be polite to, about right. it? Right. Well, so so in that in that case, and this holds true with a lot of contractors. I know we've all experienced it. I experienced it in my family business. I've worked with clients over the years that it, you know that go through this, and that pit bo- that pit boss, based on what you're saying. Even though he relented and was willing to pay it, he was so hung up on the principle of the matter, the way he went about doing it, it like you said, it just didn't resonate well with the with the client. Yeah, it you hurts know, the brand. It yeah. hurt the brand. It hurts the brand. Right? Yeah. And so he was hung up on the principle because he was too emotionally involved. Exactly. Right? That's exactly he, right. he wasn't looking at the overall experience because he was too emotionally involved from his side of the fence, not looking at, okay, how's it going to look over here? So is his job to protect the money for the Dubai fund, or is his job to make the client experience a happy place? And that's really the, that's the so, internal so, communication. There you go. The so, so, so go there. Play that. Go there. Well, I'm so pricing what, my product and services high what, enough that I, I don't have to worry about the emotional problem. I'm going to give his the guy job? his 225. Right? What is his job? to protect? Is it to protect the fund, or is it to protect the client experience? Which is it? I, well, in my opinion, it should be to protect the client experience. By the way, the final part of that, is the next roll was a seven, and they pulled about five thousand dollars back off the table, which they made their money back instantly. Right. And that guy was pissed. Yeah. Like that whole seven out right after that was just like it was like the icing on the cake of his negative experience. So hey, it's just one of those things that you look at and you say, well, what is brand? What what really is brand? And brand is equal to trust. And so you know, if people don't trust your brand. And we got to figure out how to get the EGI members to make sure they understand that it's not worth fighting about. It's another reason why I don't even answer my own reviews. I, it's illegal for us in our company to do that. Like we, well, so, I learned that. I learned that from you too. Yeah, somebody else has got to answer. That's why your company answers my reviews. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I market, not, not yeah, your HR, yeah, yeah, exactly. but your I market company answers Absolutely. my reviews. Yeah, somebody who's not emotionally tied to it. Yeah. And, and I appreciate what you said there. Is that the answer to, the, to my question was? Is that it is that pit boss's job to protect the client experience because right. because the client experience is the brand experience. The money will come. Yeah. The money will come. And that's what he, you know, he had to realize is that, you know, again, I will, I will make way more money. I don't even have to think right. about the money, really, if you think about it, right? I don't have to think about that. If, if the brand experience, the client experience is that amazing, the money will come. I mean, Disney didn't know it back then, but he did, yeah. right? I mean, he basically right. said, if we build it, we don't have to worry about money. If we build it at such a high level... Yeah. People will not only will the people come, but the people will tell others. They will bring their friends. They will; those people will tell others, and the money will be there. We don't have to worry about the money, right? And that's the thing. If you think about that, that was back in the forties, right? Yeah. So, so think about that today. Here we are, two thousand nineteen, and contractors. We still see the contractors all around the United States making the same mistakes, getting hung up on the principle of the matter, right? Versus, you know, if you really think about it, the brand. The brand experience is the customer experience. So let me, let me tell you uh, two competing stories here. So my wife and I are members of the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs. The Broadmoor has a camp called Camp Cloud. It's several thousand feet above the Broadmoor in the mountains. It's about 18 cabins up there. And we went up there for our anniversary. They have to drive you up there in a Jeep and, you know, there's, it's very limited access. There's 18 uh, camps or ca- cabins. And there's one room that's basically a treehouse that's 150 steps up there. And my wife wanted to stay in the treehouse. So we get there and we, uh, they drop us off and we go inside, they show us the lodge. I come back out, my bags are gone. Somebody took them 150 steps and they're in our treehouse up there, wow. right? So we go up there, we settle in, we come back down for dinner about nine o'clock. We go back up the 150 steps. It's dark. You got to carry a lantern. I mean, it's pitch black. And we get up there at about 10:30. My wife says, "I'm hungry." I'm like, "Babe, we just had dinner." She goes, "I know, but <laughs> they gave me this vegetarian meal." And what? I, she goes, "I'm starving." I said, "What do you want?" She goes, "I want a cheese, like a cracker, cheese and cracker plate." I said, "Babe, we're in the middle of the mountains. This is not like it's a five-star resort, the Broadmoor, but this is not like a regular hotel." 
So their caretaker had given us a phone number. Anything you need while you're here, you call us. So 11 o'clock at night, I call the caretaker. Oh, she's half asleep. I said, hey, this was well and long, and my wife is really hungry, and like a cheese plate would be like, she goes, we will open up the kitchen and get it done for you, and somebody bring it up to you. About a half an hour later, about 11.30, this young girl, I can tell by her voice, the young girl says, Mr. Long, I have your cheese plate with some fruit and some cheese. Is there anything else you would like uh, to bring up? And I said, I said, no, that'll be great. I said, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to wait at the bottom of the steps because I don't have the heart at 11.30 at night to make this young girl. So I go down and I get the stuff and bring it back up to my wife, husband of the year for sure. <laughs> but here's the point. They were willing to do that, right? A couple of weeks later, my wife goes to PetSmart to get some cat food for the cats. And there is an aggressive dog in there that bites another dog and kills it. Wow. Okay. This little poodle. And it was, I don't know what kind of dog it was, but it was some kind of aggressive style dog. I don't want to label dog, yeah, but sure. it was, but it went after this poodle and with such uh, fierceness that they could not separate him. I mean, his, he had this poodle and he killed the poodle. My wife got so freaked out, she jumps across the register and gets behind the register because this dog is out of control and it all settles down and they carry this puppy out and it's dead and the other person takes her dog away and my wife is like completely freaked out right yeah. she didn't think the dog turns on her next and their response to her is this is what happens sometimes and she's like <laughs> i'm never going back i just watched a dog get killed in your store offer him an apology or something Nothing. And wow. so now she orders the food online because she won't go back in there because of that experience. I know that's not HVAC, but it's the same principles. Yeah. Right? Taking care of people. It's what you do in your company. It's what you've always done in your companies. It's what you've been teaching for 20 or 30 years. It's what we do in my company. You have to do it even when it's hard. I say you have to do it especially when it's hard. Especially when it's hard. Yeah. We're, we're, just, we're not perfect. Like companies are not perfect, right? Right. The, so well, we're going to make run, mistakes. Because they're run by humans. Sure. We're going we're <laughs> to make mistakes. Not perfect. So it's all about how you deal with that moment of opportunity. And that's the teaching experience. That's the marketing communication side. You've yeah. got to teach your people to recognize that that's a moment of truth. What's the brand experience going to be? Yeah. Well, you, you, you say quite a bit. And, and I thought you were going to kind of touch on the phrase that you've, you, I've heard you say quite a bit. That situation with the dogs is not pet smarts fault per se right. right but it is their responsibility that's right. the key right it doesn't have to be your fault but it can be your responsibility yeah. they, they needed to step up at that point in time and do something about that you know that customer experience on both, on both sides or actually it's not even just the, you know the two dog owners it's everybody who witnesses including your wife sure. right and everybody who was in the store and and, and whatnot it's yep. Yeah, they, they didn't certainly rise, to, you know, to the measure. But but yeah. going back, you know, going back to brand. I mean, you know, logo is a piece of it, right? Mm -hmm. And so you, sure. you've, you've got to have a logo. You you talked about the uniforms. You know, the logo was on the uniform, but you said the uniform itself was impressed. And so that's you know, to me, that kind of skews more towards experience, right? Mm -hmm. And and so Gary talked about three things, right? There's the inter the external, the internal, and the operating operational or operating experience, right? And so if you really think about it two thirds of those are what is really controlled by ownership, leadership internally. Obviously the external piece, you can, like, as I said a little bit earlier, you can outsource that. You can hire some graphic designers and whatnot to, to do your logo, to do your truck wraps and so, so forth and so on. You know, come up with a tagline. Granted, you're in control of that too, but two thirds of it are pieces that I don't think most contractors even think of as being part of the brand. Mm -hmm. I think they think of that as, this is just our job, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. Well, the reality is, is once we've solved the external branding strategy, we've created, you know, the look, the feel, the brand attributes, the, the truck wraps, you're, that's a one-time thing. Right. And you don't really revisit that very often once you get it right. The rest of it then is the deliverable behind proving that that stuff that you're saying is right. But I think it's, but I, and I, and I applaud you for saying that because I'm in the process of this right now. You know, we're in the process of rebranding and I'm, I'm working with a branding expert. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he's saying though. He's saying to me, look at the internal and the operational pieces first before you say to the world, this is who we are. Right. This is what we represent. Can you deliver the promise? Can you yeah. deliver the brand promise? We got a couple minutes left guys. And, um, I just want to comment, I'm going to give a shout out to my sales and marketing manager in my HVAC company. His name is Joe Person. And he's a stud. He's a rock star in our industry. Been in about 10 years. Smart guy. 
And I met him recently. He was a GM of another company in my town. And you know what his biggest dissatisfaction was with his existing company? They would not wrap the trucks. They would not spend a couple of thousand dollars to wrap the trucks and look more professional. And he was making a ton of money. But that detail bothered him. Like, we need to do this. So, you know, we, <laughs> that's like the first thing we do. We bought eight vehicles now, right. and we wrap them immediately. I don't want anybody at my customer's house in, in a street vehicle. I want them in a company vehicle because that is the brand projection, the little things, the, the uniforms being pressed, yeah. that kind of thing. And, and, and to that extent, you know, in EGIA, you know, uh, you know, we have obviously the contractor marketplace. And in the contractor marketplace, yeah. there are a whole host of people who can work with you on your brand. Uh, iMarket is obviously one of them on the website, right? Yeah. We've got MSI Direct Mail. Thank God for help. iMarket. Big fan. <laughs> We've got MSI Direct Mail, which will help you on obviously promoting out to the and public. And I, right? I believe there's a marketing culture uh, program in there. Yeah, there's also content online. Might be some videos. There's videos, there's videos. There's downloadable content. content. Free access. Right. Uh, he and I both did classes uh, uh, just recently on uh, advertising, marketing, lead generation. And, uh, you know, we also have people who will help you with your actual logo, right? You know, helping you go through that branding profile, making you, making you go through the exercise of, are you what you say you are? Do you say what you will do, right? And then can we come up with a graphic, an image, if you will, that represents that, right? So a logo, if you will, maybe a tagline. You don't necessarily need a tagline. I think people sometimes get hung up on it to having a tagline. But then if we have that, also tying that brand into mm-hmm. stationary websites as well as truck wraps. And I think one of the best, in my opinion, that also happens to be an EGIA contractor marketplace vendor is Kick Charge. They do a great job of tying that all together, right? Yeah, their well, uh, retro logos, their design is uh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah to, absolutely. To, to quote the, uh, the immortal Ralph Waldo Emerson, because uh, you mentioned the tagline, uh, our actions speak so loudly people don't hear what we say. Yeah. It's what you do. So I think we can all agree that we got to take the branding and the service experience pretty damn seriously if we want to be if we want to be the top of the heap. If we want to be run of the mill, whatever, throw in a system, hope it works out. Yeah. So uh, final thought on that: Think about any great brand, Disney, uh, Pelican Hill Resorts in Newport Beach is the yes. number one resort. I'm um, yeah. yeah. So think about any really fantastic Pappy Van Winkle. Oh yeah. So the you know any great brand. You really can't think of a great brand that's an inexpensive brand. Yeah. They typically right. charge just a little bit more money. It doesn't have to be you know premium. Uh, Lexus really is owned by Toyota, but Lexus is you know a premium brand. They cost more money, and what they do is they they take that money and they deploy that in the operating practices, the training, communication, and they deliver. And even when they don't deliver and they, when they make a mistake, they figure out a way to make it right. And uh, so. But it's interesting, and, and you say that because it's going to be part of my presentation this week, so that's kind of where I kind of started with this conversation, so I'll close it out. Um, Lexus has a tagline, right? The newest one is, it used to be the, relent- the relentless pursuit Pursue of perfection. Of perfection. Mm-hmm. The current one is experience amazing. Mm-hmm. Now, Volvo doesn't have a tagline, but what would you say Volvo is known Safety. for? Safety. Of course. And everybody knows it. Because they lived it. They just own that they space. Live it. They it's not that they've marketed for it, they just own that space, right? They live it. With no tagline. And right? Subaru. What, what what's Subaru? What what's their brand? I would say reliability, you know. Yeah. Love. They that, promote that's, love. That's the I current think one. Southwest Airlines. They promote love. Well, that too. <laughs> they, but, they, they they say that currently. Yeah. yeah. Right. So But sometimes you need a tagline to say what you stand for, right? And sometimes you don't, right? So if you were to say luxury automobile, who would you say? Well, I, would say Lexus, I, mean, I think, I would say I think of a Rover. bunch of different ones, but Mercedes, Mercedes comes to mind. Yeah. Uh, Lexus comes to mind. Right. Uh, certainly. Uh, Rolls Royce. Uh, Rolls Royce. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bentley. Yeah. If you were to say Ferrari, what would you say? Uh, G- given, the fa- given the fact Whoa. that I drive one, right. <laughs> it's funny because my daughter, uh, she's uh, 15, and she loves me to pick her up at school in the Ferrari. But that Ferrari is pretty sparse inside. It's not like a luxury feel inside. I'm surprised she, you she's fit like, in that. She, she's like, <laughs> why does this car cost so much? I'm like, 
Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> they built the brand, and it's the power and the yeah. performance. Yeah. Speed and performance. Speed and performance, yeah. yeah. Right. That being said. It's not the luxurious yes. part. The, the, the car is like a race car inside. There's not a lot of amenities. The ultimate driving machine. BMW. BMW. Huh? What do you think of when you say, what can Brown do for you? Exactly. UPS, UPS, right? right. Yeah. If it absolutely positively has to be there overnight, overnight guaranteed. FedEx. FedEx right. built their entire company on that sure. proposition. Right. But those were taglines that that that, that, they did, lived. that did need to be said, right? They I'm lived. saying Volvo safety didn't need to be said, right? Because they own the space. Yeah. And and I, and so closing the, closing this out on branding, what space do most contractors own, right? Do they own a space at all? And, and, and again, cheapest price, yeah, that isn't going to win it. That's not going to work. 24 hour service, everybody does it. 24 hour service? Here's a better way of saying 24 hour service 24 7, 24 7, 365. All been said and done. Yeah. How about we never close? Available at your convenience, not at our leisure, right. right? Find a way to say something better than anybody else says it, then own that space. And I think that's where today and going forward, and I'm going to talk about this in my presentation this week. Uh, today and going forward, you're going to find that your brand, the brand of the equipment that you sell, does not resonate with millennials and it resonates even less. It doesn't even register with Generation Z. Yeah. They won't know what you can do. And you got to deliver. Cheers to two Cheers. Really smart dudes. What's the, in fact, what's the brand we're drinking? Well, this happened to Bigger. be a Michter uh, 10, and this is a Sazerac. I switched to the right? Sazerac. You switched to the Sazerac. Yeah. And, How uh, is it? That's a good brand. I'm going to try yeah. it next. That's a very good brand. <laughs> Cheers, boy. Cheers.